Uh, Jolly, wait for me, eh? I'm crossing to the other side to make some video. But when I come back, we go, okay? Video. This is uh, a poor neighborhood. It's not for the rich. And the reasons I came here is, is if I went to a rich neighborhood, you would think uh, because the rich will always have light, they will do anything to have light. So here, you can see, this is a poor neighborhood. That is no... Everywhere electricity. Everywhere electricity. Can you see? Everywhere electricity. So, what can you say about this? Containers and everything have electricity everywhere. Look at it. You can see. Okay. So you can see. This is what we talk about and this is what we call light when we are talking about light it is not for one pe section of the people it is for everybody look at the gutter look at where i'm passing it's a rough road so you can see for yourself accra ghana that's it great ogoni people great today i want to talk on electricity in Ghana compared to Nigeria. You see, the, the video you saw, the generator you saw, and then the light you also saw, the recordings. I made that recording. And the generator you saw, that's my generator. I bought that generator in the year 2015. When this country, Ghana, had some little light challenge. There were some challenges in their light. So for about two, three months. So for business to keep going, I bought that generator. It's 13 horsepower, helipad generator. And by conversion, then it's about 230,000 Naira. But within two, three months, which I used it, everything about the light was restored 100%. So I stopped using that generator. I only take it out to, maybe you want me to kick it and then put it back. So that generator has been dormant and has been there. It's not useless to me. Why? Because there is 24 hours electricity in Ghana. You are not going to beat your chest. You won't worry. Would there be light today or would there be light tomorrow? Oh, if I get to the house, would there be... no, there is constant electricity. If there is any fault on it, immediately you call them, they will come and rectify it for you. It shows that people are working, their brain is working. Now, I have also lived in Benin Republic. They also have 24 hours electricity. So, the people who supplies gas to all these West African countries is Nigeria, through the West African gas pipeline. So they use that gas to generate their electricity. But this big brother, that supplies electric gas to these people cannot generate electricity and supply to their own people. So have we really asked our government why there is no electricity in Nigeria? Because when you ask, you will realize that there is a lot that is going on. It is a deliberate act that they don't want that country to have electricity. Some people want to argue that, oh, the population of Ghana or the Republic is small. Yes, the population of Ghana is about 33 million people plus. Benin Republic is about 13 point something million people plus. But do you know something? I had a, a, a call with my friend from in, in, in India two days ago. So we also talk, we were also talking about this. We were talking and we also got on this electricity issue. India has overtaken China in population. India is 1,417,000,000 people. Why China is 1,412,000,000 people. He also told me that India has 24 hours electricity. And if there is any problem, even if it is dead at night, you don't need to call them. They know it. They will come to that area. They will fix the electricity immediately. If there's a major problem, they will provide temporary electricity to the people while they are working on it to ensure that they resolve the bigger problem. So, 
1 billion 400 million people can generate electricity for their people. 33 million people can generate electricity for their people. 13 point something million people can generate electricity for their own people. But 230 million people cannot generate electricity for their people. Don't we think something is fundamentally wrong with us? That is a question we should be asking ourselves. Because that contraption doesn't want anything good for the people. They don't want it. They've, they've strategized how to impoverish people to ensure that people remain in poverty. This is one of the reasons. One of the reasons why people in diaspora cannot come back home to settle. There's no constant power, no electricity. There's insecurity. They will use politics to destroy whatever investment you make in that country. All you hear on social media are you shouting capacity this, capacity chairman, capacity this. And I ask, what kind of capacity are they talking about? Capacity that cannot provide basic amenities for their people. But I realize the capacity they're talking about. The capacity they talk about is how to eliminate people, capacity of how to buy people, capacity of how to send people to take people out of this world, capacity of how to embezzle money that belongs to the people and use it for themselves and impoverish the people. That is the capacity they are talking about. Because it seems they've lost the meaning of capacity. Capacity this, capacity that. And they're not ashamed of themselves. It is sad. It is sad that you just need to weep for that country. Where you'll be asking, hey, please, is there Nepal? You call, is there Nepal? You have to be beating. I, I wonder if, at the number of people on, in that country that has, uh, uh, that maybe that will have high BP. I wonder. Because you'll be on the way going home. The, when you call, they say that the light off. Then from that place, you, you will be sad and depressed until you get home. But yet, this country is distributing gas all around them. But they can't generate electricity and distribute to their people. The individual recorded, did you hear any sound of generator? No. I knew I went by that time every day to record that video. The, 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 the noise you, you heard in one, I, I was trusting, I was asking someone to wait for me because that place is post center. So I think Real Madrid scored a goal and they were shouting. <laughs> so I crossed the road to this other side to record it. You know, some time ago, many years ago, I wrote about this electricity problem also. And, the, and, and one of my classmates, he, one of my classmates here in Ghana, he schooled in Ghana here. While he was now in Nigeria, he said, oh, in my, in my place, there, there is light too. So don't say that there is no light in Nigeria. I said, look at you. This, this are, we are the problem. I'm not talking about my place. So if you have light in your place, what about other people? We are talking about the entire country. Is there constant electricity? So the answer is no. So, Ogoni people, for us to escape this slavery and poverty, we need Ogoni political autonomy. When we get that, we put our life, our system in place. We make things better for ourselves. Those who do want to continue in slavery, they can continue. But as Ogoni people, we must continue to agitate for political autonomy. That is the only way we can escape this slavery. That is the only way we can escape it. Thank you and God bless you.